Hey everyone, what is going on and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be going over the easiest base operators to play in Rainbow Six Siege. These operators main goal is to be easy to use and learn so you can still be useful to a teammate while you're still learning. But obviously these operators are for beginners, that doesn't mean they still cannot be utilised by people in any rank though. They're just easy to get the hang of. So I'm not going to be a listing specific number of ops, I'm just going to include the ops that I believe easy for, for beginners. And without further ado, let's jump into it. So starting off with the defenders, I'm going to list all of these ops from default ops section in this video and if you want me to make a part 2 to this video with DLC ops, I'll leave a comment in the comment section down below and go like it if you're interested in a part 2. So now let's jump into it and the first operator in this list is going to be Rook. Rook has a very straightforward ability that allows him to drop armor plates at the start of a round and then he has already utilized his ability and is basically free to do whatever he wants from there on. Making him an easy op and along with this it also gives him access to the MP5 which is a very good starting weapon having access to that ACOG site alone. Along with little recoil on the weapon Rook is definitely one of the easiest operators to play in the game and even if you die you've still given the team utility that will help out all of them throughout the round. The second defender I'm going to include on this list is going to be Capcan. Again, another utility based operator that can do all of his gadgets utility within the prep phase which makes him useful even in death. Capcan brings to the table the trap that deals 60 damage when connecting with a person on the attacking side. This can seriously disadvantage the health on an attacker and may win you or a teammate a gunfight later on in the round. And also with Capcan having access to the 9x19 VSN, which is a gun which essentially has no recoil and is very easy to learn with some simple aim practice drills in Terror Sunt. With him having access to this ability and a trap, it makes Capcan very useful while also simple, which is why he is on this list. The third defender coming onto this list is Mute. Mute has a signal disruptor ability which allows you to disrupt all electrical based attacking gadgets. This includes Thermite, Habana, etc. and of course drones. Mute's MP5K is also a great weapon to pair up with this ability, which makes him so dangerous along with the SMG-11. Having access to that secondary SMG will win you certain gunfights, but of course the SMG-11 is in no way a beginner's gun if you guys are here with experience, so it will take some practice to get used to, so it's not really part of the beginner's thing, I'm more focusing on the weapon and gadget, the primary weapon. But having the ability to place your jammers early gives you the freedom to contribute to the team the way you want to after that and it can also assist newer players in stopping drones from scanning them, which can be difficult to counter if you're new to the game and don't know what you're looking for. Combining all three of these attributes makes Mute a great pick to purchase as one of your first operators. The final defender I have on this list is Jaeger. Jaeger has one of the easiest but best guns to utilize on defense, the 416 Carbine, which is one of the, a powerful weapon and one of the only two assault rifles you can bring on defense. Utilizing this makes Jaeger alone already a great operator and is why so many people lean towards him even when playing first start. But also pairing this up with his ability, the ADS, which is a mountable gadget that destroys thro two throwable objects from the attacking team, and he has access to three ADSs, is also one of the most effective gadgets you can bring on the defending team, because there is an insane amount of uses for anti-throwables that destroying them can just really come in useful and in handy. This is the reason Jaeger has a 70% pick rate, and that is the only downside of getting Jaeger. He's one of the best and easiest operators to learn, but it may be difficult to pick him before someone else does, but there's always the other operators in this vid for now. But obviously, as I said before, Jaeger getting picked a lot by basically pros, intermediate players, beginners. Jaeger is picked by everyone, so getting him may not be the easiest thing. So if you're looking for people to dive straight into as a beginner, then I would recommend getting Jaeger first, but definitely get him along the line. But yeah, nonetheless, Jaeger is still a great beginner's op. And that's going to be the defenders, and now we're going to be starting off the attacking side of this list. We are going to dive into Sledge. Sledge is a pretty straightforward attacker. He has a sledgehammer that can destroy every breakable surface in the game as long as it isn't reinforced. Along with this, he has access to the L85A2 assault rifle, which is very easy to use and a great beginner's weapon. Now, when it comes to utilizing the hammer, it can be very effective when playing from above a objective and is the main reason most of high ranks will play sledge, but playing vertical isn't an easy concept to get a hold of when you're beginning and me myself still struggles with playing vertical. But in terms of beginner's guide sledge, he just makes moving through the map a lot easier and has a great weapon to accompany you through it. And this just pairs up for a great beginning operator as I've said before. And using that sledgehammer to your advantage rotating through walls instead of pushing into open hallways will definitely help you out when you're trying to start. Because getting into those open gunfights is going to be difficult, especially if you're just starting. Because obviously your aim isn't going to be there yet. And this is where Sledge comes in handy to help because obviously his Sledgehammer is going to come in handy for pushing through walls, pushing through above. And if you do want to play above, if you want to try out playing above, go ahead. It'll definitely help you out in the long term. It's kind of an IQ play going above. And if you're still starting off and you'll be playing against lower ranks, it'll definitely win you a lot more gunfights. 
Now next up we have IQ. IQ has one of the most straightforward gadgets to use in this game. As I said with Sledge, they are both really straightforward gadgets to bring on the attacking side, which makes them such easy operators. She has access to one of the greatest loadouts of weapons in R6 in my opinion, having the AUG, the Commando, and the G8A1. Now if you guys are beginners, you're not going to go those weapons, but one of them is a powerful assault rifle. One of, The other one is another powerful assault rifle, both packed with pretty good weapons. I recommend the Commando over the AUG because it brings the ACOG sight, which will be useful for you guys to starting off the game. And the G8A1. The G8A1 is a powerful LMG that you can bring on IQ that has access to all sites and it is just more bullets. If you guys aren't really for reloading and you just want to push along, I recommend bringing the G8. All three of them are great weapons in their own way. And her gadget gives her ability to track electrical items on the defensive side, which can include pulse and vigil when their abilities are active. This makes IQ very useful, but the only problem is that when she has this ability out, she substitutes to her secondary pistol while having the IQ scanner out, so you cannot have your primary scanner out and her ability, which can put you in a disadvantage if you get into an open gunfight with the pistol out, which I wouldn't recommend if you guys can avoid it. Try to only use the ability in safe areas, especially if you're a beginner, because obviously you can still get kills with a pistol, but your chances of winning the gunfight are a lot lower, especially if you're coming up against a person with a primary weapon. And make sure to utilize her three great weapons to your advantage, of course, and start to practice becoming a fragging player, because that's really what IQ's goal is in the long run, because using that ability can help you frag as well, it can help you utilize gadgets, but really, seeing them through the wall is only useful if you're playing below, and that's not something you might pick up as a beginner. So she kind of will just lead you into a fragging play, which may help you in the long run if you turn into a weapon. And the final attacker I'm going to use is Ash. Now I can already feel some people disagreeing with this decision, but when you think about it, her gun is great and it is also very easy to use, which a newcomer can utilize to get more kills while they are learning. And her ability is very straightforward and effective no matter who is using it, which makes her a great beginner's operator, and even if you guys do think Ash is just dumb, sweaty, all that, if you are starting the game new, I don't really want to get you into bad habits of being an Ash Jaeger main because let me just tell you, if you're an Ash Matt Jaeger main, you're probably going to get some toxicity. But Ash is just a great beginner's operator and it's probably a reason so many people are good with her because they started with her. Same with Jaeger. But I believe Ash is a great pick for a beginning player. Now, just like Jaeger, you might have some trouble getting on Ash, as I said before, once you buy her, due to her very high pick rate in just about any game. But if you can secure Ash and utilize her R4C, which is a powerful, easy-to-use weapon, or her G36C, which is her alternative, which does have access to ACOG if you prefer to play range. This, along with the breaching charge ability that she has access to, can be very useful for sight pushing, which makes her a great operator to learn and begin with. But also just remember you can use your breaching charge on things other than walls. This goes for all operators with breaches such as Zofia. I haven't put her in here because she's a DLC operator. But you can also utilize them for barbed wire. You can use them to take out cameras, not default cameras, maestro cameras. And yeah, that's another great use for IQ. I didn't mention that. She is very great counter to uh, Valkyrie. So if you guys come up against a Valkyrie main, definitely bring IQ. But if you, if you can utilize these breach charges all around, she can be very useful. She has two of them, and you can bring the actual deployable breach charges if you prefer to focus them on the wall, and you can use her ability on the ground. But it's up to you guys, but she's just a great all-around operator for you guys to learn with. But other than that, that is about all I have to say in this video. If you guys agree or disagree with what I picked, if you are an experienced person, make sure to let me know down below. And also make sure to let me know if you're new to the game, if this video helped you. I'd be glad to hear all of you guys' feedback, and I hope you guys enjoyed what I made. If you guys are still here at the end of the video, you may be somewhat interested in checking out my Twitch channel. The link is in the description. I stream every day at 7.15pm Australian Eastern Standard Time, so come check me out if you have the time. And finally, if you guys want a part 2 of the DLC operators, my comment will be down in the comment section, hopefully when this video goes live, as long as I don't forget, it will be pinned. Thank you guys for watching, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.